Hey, what's up? This is Tim Weaver with Studio4Media.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create this Newton's Cradle, or these kinetic balls, inside of Maya. And uh, as you can see here, they play, and then sure enough, boom, we made physics. Hopefully, by the end of this, you guys will understand the gravity of this tutorial. Okay. Hey, make sure you guys go over to studio4media.com and take a look at all the tutorials we have there. If you like these free ones, I guarantee you're going to like the ones we have available for all of our members. And uh, also, you can see a full collection of all of our free tutorials as well. Uh, thanks to everybody who's already signed up. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up a new scene. Uh, this product file will be available for whoever wants it. I'll make it available on studio4media.com at our blog. So uh, you can go there and uh, download it if you want. So in our new scene, I'm just going to create a polygon plane. And go ahead and hide our grid there. I don't really need to see that anymore. Then I'll also create a polygon cylinder. I'm just going to be creating a really simple base for our kinetic balls to uh, be on. So just put a cylinder in each four of the corners and also something to go across the top here. Go ahead and do this negative 90. You guys can spend a little bit more time if you want to make something uh, a little bit fancier, uh, but for now this is gonna work. So we just have a uh, couple cylinders and our ground plane here. I'm actually gonna make this a little bit skinnier. There we go, already. So <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and create a new NURBS sphere. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, duplicate this a couple times and line it up, make sure it looks good. You want it to be above your ground plane, at least a little bit. And as you're duplicating these, you want to make sure that they don't intersect. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems later on. So make sure they don't have any intersection or overlapping when you're duplicating them. Try to get them fairly close so the simulation runs smoothly. That looks pretty good there. And looks good. I'm going to select all of our balls, go over to our Dynamics tab. So up here in the upper left, go down to Dynamics. And I'm going to say Soft slash Rigid Bodies, Create Active Rigid Body. There we have it. <clears throat> now I'm also going to add a field. So I'm going to go to Fields gravity and in the attribute editor I'm gonna bump up the magnitude quite a bit to a value of 50. Now if we hit play right now you're gonna notice these balls are gonna drop straight through the floor and just keep on going forever because uh, the gravity is affecting them. So now we know everything is working. But we don't want that to happen. We want them to be constrained to the upper part of this mechanism here and uh, then we can run our simulation. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and select the first ball. And we're going to go to Soft Slash Rigid Bodies, Create Nail Constraint. And we can move this up and over and put this into position above right where our supporting beam is at. Then we're going to want to select it again and do the same thing. Create nail constraint and now move it to the other side. And we are going to do this for every single one of our balls until we have it, all of them completed. So, those are all looking good. Not bad at all. Now, if I hit play, let's see what happens. So it's playing and nothing's happening, which means that they are staying in position, which is good. The gravity is affecting them because we tested that last time and they fell right through. So now all the balls are constrained to our support beams and uh, that's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and uh, mess with some adjustments here. 
So if I select one of these balls and open up the attribute editor here, let's go to the uh, rigid body setting, scroll down to our initial settings, and let's apply an initial velocity to this first ball. I'm going to apply an initial velocity in the x-axis, so, and I'm going to say maybe 20. Yeah. So, okay. Let's try bumping it up to maybe 50. All right. So we got this set to a value of 50 in our x-axis. We hit play, and we get a little bit of movement, and the constraints are working well, but this is not behaving properly, you can tell. I'm going to bump up our frames here as well, something like a thousand in both of these. And uh, yeah, it's not behaving quite like we want it to. So let's go ahead and uh, make some changes. I'm going to select all of these balls, go to the channel box, scroll down here. Let's change the bounciness to value of one. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn our static friction off value of zero, and uh, let's take a look at that, see what that does. Holy cow, that is something else. We're going to turn down our initial velocity to, let's say, a value of 20, back down to where it was, and now you can see that's looking much better. We got pretty much uh, believable looking Newton's Cradle here. Uh, something else we can do is right now it starts just at a stopped motion, and since we have that initial velocity uh, pushing it forward, it creates the motion, but we want it to start uh, from the top, one of the balls to be up top like this, and then swing in, not start completely still. So let's go ahead and hit play, and wait for this furthest to the right ball to be at the top of its arc, right there. Let's try it one more time. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, go up here to solvers, initial state, we're going to set this for all dynamics. And then we're going to go back here and delete the initial velocity that we have set back to zero. And uh, now we can go ahead and push play back at frame one. And you can see now at frame one we start with this up in the air. We'll hit play and this will start our motion. Alright, so we got that Newton's Cradle built and uh, it's looking pretty good. This is pretty much uh, this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, just a basic tutorial on how to create some pink constraints and do some really cool things uh, inside of Maya. Things that uh, not many people maybe think about using it for. So surely you guys can think of some other cool uses. Um, you can do a lot more things besides just five balls like this. You can create some pretty complex simulations using this technique. So uh, have fun with it. Be creative and uh, be sure to subscribe and take a look at uh, studio4media.com for even more great tutorials. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.